That's our news. The Today Show is getting ready to start this morning. We hope you stay dry and please drive carefully. Have a great day. Good morning. In Geneva, U.S. and Russian negotiators have announced agreement on a new arms treaty. It calls for the stockpiles of strategic warheads to be reduced by about two-thirds and completely eliminates those long-range land-based nuclear missiles with multiple warheads. Though no signing date has been announced, the agreement's in place, and the text of it is headed for presidential review today, Tuesday, December the 29th, 1992. From NBC News, this is Today with Bryant Gumbel and Catherine Couric. And good morning. Welcome to today, last Tuesday of 1992, and Margaret Larson. Well, yeah, I think so, <laughs> since Friday's the new year. <laughs> I'm so alert, as always. Did you hear Nixon's out of office? You know, I thought something like that might have happened, but I'm glad to have it. Margaret confirmed. Larson is uh, joining us from the news desk while Katie's taking a week off. We're going to uh, swing it on over to that news desk in just a little bit, find out about what's going on in Geneva and the rest of the world, then we'll move on to other matters, yes. In fact, a battle brewing in Cincinnati where a group of white supremacists have erected a cross in a downtown square, but it keeps getting torn down. We're going to explore some of the issues of racial division and free speech this morning. Also, tax tips, the last few things you can do this year to save some money on your taxes next year. Squire and Ailes are going to step in, give us their winners and losers of 92, their rookie politicians mm -hmm. of the year and the like. And also we've got uh, something called I'm Your Man. It's a featurette that's showing here in New York. Build us the first interactive movie in history. You actually get to choose which direction the characters proceed in the movie. Yeah, we're going we're to show you how it works. Let's go to the news desk right now where Diana Crickey is joining us this week. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Margaret. And good morning, everyone. In Geneva this morning, top American and Russian diplomats have wrapped up a sweeping agreement to reduce nuclear arsenals. Jed Duval joins us now from Geneva. Good morning, Jed. Good morning, Diana. Uh, they said they thought they could do it. You know, they came here Sunday night. They got to work Monday. They worked hard morning, afternoon, and long into last night. And after a short session this morning, they came out to announce that they had an agreement. We now have, I think, a text that we can put to the two presidents, and uh, both of, both, all three of us will be reporting to our presidents within the next few hours. I will fly back right away. Uh, the presidents will then have to look at what we have come up with. The final decision will be theirs. And I would hope we would have news for you within the next few days. That's a treaty, an agreement that comes from the new way that Americans and Russians have of looking at each other. We've had differences. We've discussed them, and we have worked hard to try to come to mutual accommodation. And I'd like to say to both the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Defense that uh, I very much appreciate the attitude with which they've come to these negotiations. Now, that's a treaty that makes for serious reductions in nuclear weapons and their delivery systems, and the two societies with a new attitude between each other can now go to biological and chemical weapons, the next big steps. Diana? All righty. Thank you, Jed. And elsewhere overseas, an aircraft carrier that's been assigned to Operation Restore Hope is being redeployed to the Persian Gulf to help enforce that so-called no-fly zone over southern Iraq. The reassignment of the Kitty Hawk is a show of force directed at Baghdad. Iraqi jets reportedly continue to fly over southern Iraq despite the shooting down of one plane on Sunday. There is a published report of a ghastly massacre carried out as Allied troops prepared to launch Operation Restore Hope. The New York Times says religious leaders, business executives, and others were rounded up by gang members and killed in the Somali port of Kismayu. The Times quotes diplomats and witnesses as saying about 100 people were murdered, most of them considered likely supporters of the Allied effort. Guns remain a serious problem in Somalia. Today, foreign editor Dennis Murphy joins us from Mogadishu. Dennis, what's the latest there? Good morning, Diana. The latest is that a U.S. Marine convoy was fired on this morning near the capital. There were no reports of injuries, but NBC's Mike Mosier and Bill Purdy were aboard the lead vehicle. The U.S. Marines make a daily resupply run to the village of Valley Dogal, 60 miles from the capital. Food and fuel for the Marines stationed there. As the convoy passed over a country bridge, gunfire erupted. The lead vehicle was safely through, but someone behind was under fire. Uh, shots fired, shots fired, over. Roger that, which vehicle are you coming from, over? Uh, that's a negative, they're on friendly, coming from our right side, over. Roger that, uh, Bravo. 
what's the area? You got uh, any comm back there? That's a roger. Let them know we got shots coming from the right. Sierra 1 and 2, be advised, you got shots from the right. Quick radio checks up and down the convoy. Everybody was okay. The Marines think rival gangs are fighting a turf war for control of the bridge at Afghul. This is the third convoy in the last 24 hours to be fired on. The Marines' rule of the road keep going. Roger that. Is this they're kind of random shooting right now. Uh, it doesn't appear that they're well trained or, you know, good marksmen. Uh, you know, that's evident by the fact that we've had no personnel hit. When that convoy comes back home tonight, the Marines say with a great deal of conviction there will be no more incidents at that bridge. Diana? Mm. Dennis, thank you. It's not just in faraway lands that Americans are threatened by guns and violence. In Los Angeles on Monday, a young man was shot to death on a street where funeral services were underway for still another victim. Keith Morrison reports. There was a funeral yesterday in this confused and shell-shocked city in a city, South Central for a boy who died in a juvenile detention center. His name was Anthony Bowie, and he was just 16. Died after he'd been restrained by guards. His family, grief-stricken, angry, wanted a public funeral, wanted to accuse those guards of killing their boy with an illegal chokehold. But then... Outside the church, two young mourners with some other score to settle had words or just saw each other or something. And this is what happened. The number of shots uh, exposed and people went flying everywhere. We ran, hit the ground, making sure that we had not hit by a bullet. And now another young man is dead. He had a name too, Vernon Lincoln, just 18. The police, trying to piece together what happened, shrugged and said, second time this month, a shooting at a funeral. Funerals are where enemies meet. Another place to die in a city too used to senseless death. Keith Morrison, NBC News, Los Angeles. In other news, blowing snow and extreme cold are beating up on motorists in the western United States. Cars skidded off snowy, icy highways in states from Arizona to Washington. Forecasters expect as much as three feet of snow to come down on parts of California. Joe Montana came back from nearly two years on the sidelines last night to lead the San Francisco 49ers past the Detroit Lions 24-6. The veteran quarterback got a long, loud ovation as he returned to action after recuperating from a torn elbow tendon. He said it put a lot of pressure on him. I just didn't want to make any big mistakes. You know, I didn't want to throw interception at, you know, a couple of them. Um, or any at all, but so I, I knew I was going to be cautious. I kept trying to tell myself not to be over cautious with what you were doing, and, and uh, but it, it, it's still just natural. I, I just didn't want to make a big mistake. Montana threw a pair of fourth quarter touchdown passes to lock up the 49er victory in the final game of the regular NFL season. And it's now 7.08 and back to Brian and Margaret. Strange year. He deserves the applause, but the guy he was in for is the best player in the league this year. Steve Young. Quarterback. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Rondo Bizarro. Um, Fritz Coleman is joining us from KNBC TV in Burbank, enjoying a week in New York while Willard is enjoying a week off. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Good to be here, Brian. Lots of snow and cold out west, folks. Let's see how much of both today as they get a week-long storm back there that they desperately need. 12 to 36 more inches of snow in the Sierra Nevada range. Southern California mountains mountain range of six more inches, 18 inches in the Intermountain West. And look at some of these cold temperatures, minus 18 in Great Falls, Montana, minus 10 in Huron, South Dakota. And here's how it translates in wind chills. Anywhere from minus 30 to minus 60 degree wind chills from the northern plains back through the northern Rockies, minus 50 in Fargo, minus 42 in Huron, minus 33 in Miles City, Montana. Let's get a look at today's weather map now. Ice and fog in the east, lots more storm out west. You will encounter fog with possible delays today from Boston to Chicago, Houston, down to Orlando. Rain showers, middle Mississippi Valley up into southern New England. The ice on the cold side of all these storms. Upstate New York into central Maine and from northern Michigan back down through eastern Nebraska. And of course, one to three more feet of snow out in the west and they're loving it. Tired of watering the lawns with Avion in southern California. That's it nationally. Let's take a look at what the weather is in your local area now. Good morning, southern California. Hope you have your umbrella handy. You're going to need it during the morning hours today. Later on, we're expecting the rain to turn to showers and taper off. That might be late today or sometime tomorrow. Temperatures are not going to get very high around Southern California. Look for afternoon highs not far above where they are right now. That means the upper 50s or the low 60s or so. 
And as we look ahead to the five-day forecast, including New Year's Day, we see the good news. New Year's Day might be partly sunny, so it might be a dry one for the Rose Bowl and Rose Parade. And that's a look at weather. Ten past the hour, and here's Margaret. Fritz, thank you. On Close Up this morning, heightened tensions in Iraq. As we reported, the U.S. military shot down an Iraqi warplane this week after that plane breached the no-fly zone in southern Iraq. Now, the U.S. aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk is on its way to the Gulf region to respond to any additional activity Saddam Hussein may have up his sleeve. NBC's Pentagon correspondent is Fred Francis. He is at the Pentagon this morning. Good morning, Fred. Good morning, Margaret. Before we talk about Iraq,